We've been going through God speaking to us, and uh, I think all of you are aware God speaks to us in many different ways. I've just put on um, that God speaks to us through other people in our lives. And I think we need to be open for anyone, even a non-believer, God can use to speak into your life. Okay? And you'll even see that in the scriptures, where God speak to he spoke through his then, heathens into his people's lives. And the question is, are you open for God to speak to however he, he chooses? And last week we had a look at the fact that maybe you are a arm and you're a leg and you're a toe and you're a hip and a kidney or whatever. That, you need to make sure that you fulfill your role in the body of Christ. If you don't, you're dishonoring God and the gift that is bestowed upon you. And maybe he will take it away from you and give it to someone else. Although I don't believe that because he wants you to function the way you have been called to function in the body. And to bless the church by the gift that is placed within you. Some of you are incredible. You have a gift of wisdom. If I c some of you, if you have a gift of wisdom with finance, and you are to impart that into the body. Th because there are some people that are very stupid when it comes to finance. Let me tell you, it is shocking. Hello, some of you might be here. Put up your hand if you like that. <laughs> no one. So the, we are to make sure that we are open for God to speak to us through other people's lives. The other ones we've looked at is through hard times, through his creation. We looked at um, Lizette's beautiful stone that God revealed himself and his love for her through a stone. Wow. Uh, and obviously we know the story of the donkey. There's so many different examples. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, through the fivefold ministries, obviously the past prophet, evangelist, uh, teacher, etc. Um, and then through our spirits. And the most important is through the scriptures. And any word that God speaks to you, however way you may receive it, you make sure that you line it up and check that it lines up with scripture. If it doesn't, discard it. Okay? even if it comes from a so-called prophet, okay? Hello. Make sure that anything that you feel God has said to you must line up with Scripture. If it goes contrary to Scripture, do not allow that in your life. So, this morning, we're going to have a look at God speaks to us through music. Who, who here confirms that in their life? Let me see. Some of you. All of us. I believe that music is a language in the realm of the spirit and that is why Satan uses it so powerfully and especially in the younger generation. And I find it very sad, but uh, he uses that powerfully. How many of you believe that God can speak to you through any music? Or only Christian music? Can he speak to you through any music? Even secular do you believe that? Do you believe that? I was scared. I, I think most of you are mature, sir. But m some people would say, whoa, 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 whoa. Who is it? Slow down. Secular music? No, you can't speak to me. How many of you have been worried and anxious about things and you <laughs> so worried you can't almost breathe and then suddenly that song of Bob McFern comes into your spirit, don't worry. Here we go. Even in the church, you're going to have it. Don't worry. Kevin's going to play it for us. And may you allow this to speak into your heart. May you allow that for God to speak into your heart. Okay. So when I was 18, um, we went. Yeah, yeah, that's like. Um, I really knew I wanted to go study to be a pastor. So we had like this little farewell prefect thing so we we, we the, the bunch that we were had a, a big thing so we went to Victoria for the whole weekend by ourselves and everything so uh, we went to this nightclub so from when I entered there I was just I was not feeling very comfortable because it was one of those where, where it was a real nightclub not a dance soaky soaky hall and um, this music is playing and the next minute the Holy Spirit said to me can I show you something and I said, yes, and he opened my eyes, and I saw the demonic at, 
activity going on against the walls in there. So there God spoke to me. It's the fastest I've left the building, I can tell you that. I was sitting outside in the parking lot by myself thinking, I ain't going in there again. Thank you very much. But there God warned me, showed me what can happen, what is going on sometimes with secular music. Because he wanted me to leave. I already in the Holy Spirit felt uncomfortable and I should have listened the first time the Holy Spirit said, this is not where you should be in. And then he showed me. And yeah, I left. I've heard about this uh, guy that had a uh, heart operation. But before he had his, or basically a heart transplant. Before he had his heart transplant, he used to love classical music. And then after the operation, he just loved heavy rock music. And he couldn't understand what was going on, why, why this happened. And then as he checked up on, on, on the guy from whom he received the, the heart previously, apparently this guy loved rock music, heavy metal rock music. So this guy, when he had the heart transplant, started loving heavy rock music. So, but the Bible tells us that uh, guard your heart against many things. And I'm not saying hard rock or heavy metal is bad, but there are some stuff in there that are not good for you. Some, some, some songs. But uh, it just shows you that uh, uh, when the Bible says guard your heart, it means guard your heart against many things. So... Things that you think, and I see the sermon is going about, uh, it's all about uh, God speaking through music to us. And definitely Satan also speaks through music to people. So, guard your heart. That's all I want to say. Yet so often we allow the worries of this world to grab a hold of our heart because I can't pay my rent. And I can't pay my electricity account. And I can't pay my staff. And I can't pay... Do you understand? And here we suddenly hear, don't worry, chill out. God is in control. He will steer your ship if you'll allow him to. So I hope that spoke to you. Who of you are happy now? Don't have worries. May you not worry about your school. Tomorrow you can worry about it. Chill out, it's Sunday, it's a Sabbath rest. Best day to chill out, yeah? No worries. That is how God wants us to live with. <sighs> Lord, I put those burdens on your shoulders to carry because I was not called or I am not equipped or able to carry them. For the burdens of life are not mine to carry because you are not strong enough. Even though you think you're strong enough, you're not strong enough. I'm also not strong enough. How many times have you felt the whole weight of the world on your shoulders? Who of you have felt that before? And then suddenly the song by Ace of Base comes. Who of you believe it's a beautiful lo life? Life is wonderful. And it's a choice that you make. Even though they are incredibly tough times and storms that come in your life, life is beautiful because you have Christ on your side. What did it say there also? I want to be beside you. What did that say to you? Watch this. Who do you want to be beside? You? You, okay. You want, okay. Who do you want to be beside? Uh, not ne next to your wife. Yes, but no, but no, no, you, this is what I'm trying to say to you because you listen to it and then some of you will suddenly say, yeah, but actually I want to be next to you, Lord. But th this, is, this guy is singing, I want to be next to you, like my wife, for instance. I want to be next to Ancha. But th then suddenly God can, you can suddenly feel, but actually, Lord, I want to be next to you. Who felt that? Do you understand? So we can allow God to speak to us through anything and even secular songs. However, there's a major caution in this, and I think we need to be aware of this. And sadly, much of the younger generation are not aware of the incredible power of music. 
I remember many years ago being at a conference by Mark Temperato. He used to pay, pay, play for um, uh, many, many, many Z Zeppelin, many well-known people in my ear. And Bob, uh, what's that woman? It no, I can't say that in church. Uh, what's that lady with blonde hair? Uh, sorry? No, but in any case, he played for many, many, many very popular people. And he showed us what some of these Satanists do is they take, they take songs or words that they want to say. Like, let's say, I worship Satan. And they will backtrack it and then they will sing it. And literally, when you take those songs, and I used to do it because we had CDs and you'd put it the other way around and it would literally play, play that. It is shocking. And they're still doing that today. And we need to be aware that Satan wants to use music to distort the love of God that he has for you and actually speak to you through that into your spirits. But m may we use it for the right reason and may we be open for God to speak to us through music because one of the most powerful mediums that God uses to speak to us. How many of you knows how many Psalms are there in the Bibles? In the Bible, how many Psalms? Lots. Yes, there's lot. How many? There's fire. Who feel? Hundred then? <laughs> yes. Someone said that there are hundred and fifty. There are hundred and fifty Psalms in the Bible. Were they supposed to be sung? Or read? They, they actually supposed to be sung. Do you know that? Do you know what a psalm is? You can go and I Google this so you can have the Google's definition. And I certainly don't believe everything Google says, just by the way. But it's sacred song or poem used in worship. So the songs David mostly wrote, for what purpose? For praise and for worship. And some of them, and even some of the songs that we sang today, are songs of declaration, where you say, Lord, I love you, I'm declaring that. There are other songs where we call other people, come, let's worship the Lord. Do you understand? So there these different genres when it comes to, to praise and worship. But do you understand that the Psalms were actually there and written for worship and for praise? Yet all of us read them. Yet many of them should be, actually, all of them we should be singing. Some of them as declarations. So here's one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible. And we're not going to sing it, we're going to read it. Psalms 23, 1 to 6 reads the following. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. And that's a declaration. Because of him being the one that guides and steers and leads my life, I'm not going to be in a position of always wanting because my needs are met. Okay? He makes me lie down in green pastures. In other words, he brings a stillness to my life. He leads me beside quiet waters, even though the waters of my life may feel extremely stormy at this present moment in time. Then it says, he restores my soul, where I feel, where my will, my emotions, my everything just feels, <sighs> he restores me back again. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Why, why for his name's sake? Why does the Bible say, he, restore, he, he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake? He leads me in areas of godliness, he prevents me and speaks to me, don't go into the, I want you out of this uh, situation, I want you out of this disco. Why? What is the reason for that? So that you can, ultimately that you can be his witness. So he can protect you from being contaminated, but that you can ultimately be his witness. For his name's sake, in other words, for his glory. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I go through tough times, hard times, broken times, losses, whatever the case may be, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Who of you have fear of the state of the world today? Anyone? 
Yet we shouldn't. The Bible clearly says, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Even though they're trying to wind things down, Satan is trying to push his agenda at the rate of not, I'm not going to live in fear. God has not called me to live in fear. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They direct me onto the right path. They bring comfort to me that I know that you are there. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows with joy and thanksgiving and gratitude. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Why? Because of him. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord temporary. Does it say that? No. Forever and ever and ever. And that's a beautiful psalm to read, but it's even more beautiful to sing. And it's even more beautiful when you allow God to speak into your heart. And you say, thank you, Lord, that I'm going through this tough time. Thank you that this valley seems so deep. But thank you that this is only a temporary time in my life that you're going to take me on to the hilltops again. And you, and you allow God to speak into your life. I don't just sing every word that's when we worship. And I'm sure many of you don't. And I want to encourage you don't. Sometimes you need to keep quiet and let God speak. Let him speak. That he can minister to you through the song. Because it is one of the most powerful ways that he can change your heart. Why? Because the minute music plays, our emotions are stirred up. Our spirit becomes open. It's an incredibly powerful medium. And you can use it as a background in, in your Bible study. You can use it uh, as a background when you're driving, whatever the case may be, and you say, Lord, speak to me through this. Do you know, who knows how many, uh, more or less, how many Christian songs are copyrighted in the world today? Who knows? What's your guess, you guys that play music? What's, what's your rhyme? What's your hey? How many would you say? 100,000, 100,000, 200, 300? Hard, hard guess. 500 million. I mean, sorry, 500,000 copyright Christian songs. 500,000. How many of you sang in your lifetime? 100? 200? 300? Can you believe it? Fi now, some of them are magnificent. They are beautiful. They are truly inspired of God. But there are others that are rubbish. <gasps> How can you say that? There are some that their theology is, how do I diplomatically say that, very poor, actually terrible, and should never be sung in the church. And I think some of you have come across songs like that. So you need to make sure that the songs that you do sing, and that you are, because when you sing it, you're repeating it and you're memorizing it. That's why the beautiful thing is when you have a psalm, and you sing it, you're memorizing the scriptures without you even realizing it or knowing. And there's power in that. But when they're offbeat scripturally and they're not truthful, then we need to not sing them and let them go. Now, like I said, music has a unique ability to touch every single one of our ho hearts. I believe it's like an uh, international language of the heart. And God uses it powerfully to speak into all of our lives. Who of you have heard the, the, the song? No, I don't. Let me not say who of you. Who of you have not heard this, the, the, I think it's a song or the words, Obey Your Thirst? Anyone? Have you heard that? Obey Your Thirst? Oh, my word. Have you never seen the Sprite advert? I don't even look at TV. Y y the problem is we're unaware. We just... But you don't know. That, who have, you, have you heard it? Do you know that the Sprite advert years back said, Obey your thirst? Do, who's seen that? A couple of you. Uh, some of you are awake. The rest of you are living in, 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 in dreamland. It is, I guarantee you've seen that. 
obey your thirst. Is that scriptural? Or is that very dangerous? Why? Because it's indoctrinating you to obey your emotions and your senses. Without people even realizing it, it goes, and I guarantee you've seen it before. And I guarantee you've heard it before. Every single one of you, even the little lighties. And the problem with that is it's indoctrinating you to obey your five senses. And we should never be led by our senses without the influence of the Holy Spirit. I mean, imagine every one of us obeyed our senses. Hey? <sighs> obey your thirst. Oh, my word. Please don't obey your thirst. Okay. Obey God. Okay. Music has an incredible ability to stir up our emotions and to get us spiritually on track or off track. And sadly, Satan uses it mostly to get us off track. So I want to encourage you, be careful of what you listen to. Music is certainly a form of, of communication has been used in history and in cultures throughout history it's been used. And uh, many of us can and do find comfort, we find solace, we find inspiration when it comes to mu music. And some way more than others. Some of you, you will get in a car and you will, they will put on music. If I get into a car and put on the music, my wife switches it off. So I don't have an option. I'm, I've become accustomed to just my accepting that. Because my marriage is more important than the music. So, but there are some that they have music 24-7 360, they, it plays all the time in their home. Who's like that? Watch this. You'll see some people here. Yeah, there's some. You see? There are some people that want, they, it brings comfort to their soul. It ministered to them. Maybe, or should I say, I hope that you say to God, speak, speak to me this day through music, especially those of you that listen to music 24-7. And you can learn the scripture through it. And it can connect you to him in a way that nothing else can. Ephesians 5 verse 18 to 20 it says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. The Bible says don't do it. Okay. If you're a Christian and you get drunk, you need to question your, your walk with God and your commitment to him. Must I repeat that? Don't you dare call yourself a Christian and you live like the world. Don't do it. Okay. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, with hymns, and with spiritual songs. Speak to who? Speak to one another. So when someone comes and let's say they lead in worship, or even someone comes and just sings a song, do you know that they can in that be speaking to you, and through as they speak to your worship or praise, God then speaks to you as well at the same time, simultaneous. Sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to sing and make music in our hearts to the Lord. He wants us to praise Him. He wants us to glorify Him. He wants us to exalt His name forever. And you must, I want to encourage you to use worship in your time when you spend time with the Lord. Play. God, there are so many different uh, worship songs out there. We are blessed in this day and age. Most of us here have devices, so we can, I don't know about the little ones yet, but all of us just about have a device where we can use it to still our spirits, especially when we are in turmoil. And there are times where we're in so much turmoil we just cannot think straight. And I want to encourage you, what did David do when he, did, when he was in that position? What did he lean, lean towards? Music. Play the harp or whatever. Even the other kings, when they were... Mm, Bring in the, in, in the musicians. Come let them minister to calm down my spirit. 
that God can speak and bring sanity. There's, a, there's an incredible way in which God ministers to our spirits when, when we worship Him. And every single time that you worship here on a Sunday, when you worship at home, I want to encourage you sometimes to not sing. And just say, because you'll suddenly just feel it when you open yourself. And just say, Lord, speak to me. And he'll suddenly there will come a flood of his words coming into your heart. Where he'll prompt you, where he'll say, I'm with you, I love you, whatever the case may be. Who of you s this week has not felt loved by God? But it came. Anyone else? And what, what, what does God do in a situation like that? What does he sometimes do? He sent you music. There you go. And it uplifted your spirit where you were down in the dumps, wanted to give up, wanted to throw in the towel. That is how God uses someone else, but he used music, used someone else to send it, but he used music. <sighs> when you feel that you're not loved, who of you have ever had that song coming to your heart? And we're going to play it and sing it. So even when Satan comes at you with the flood and says, I don't, God doesn't love you, look at you, he's left you, he's forsaken you. And then suddenly, may this, may this song come into your heart and may he minister you. Jesus loves you. This you should know. And if you don't, you have been deceived by Satan. I don't care what you're going through, what you've lost, what, you, what mountain you're climbing, Jesus loves you. And may you sing that. Until you, you believe it in your spirit. Amen? And that is how God speaks to us. Even through music. And that's the beauty of listening to music. That when you're down in the dumps or feeling lonely or there's no comfort in you, he'll comfort your heart. Jesus loves you. This I definitely 100% know. Even though you're naughty, even though you don't get the greatest marks, maybe you even fail at school, your self-worth and value is not based on your failure at school or your past rate. Right? It is based on the fact that God loves you unconditionally just because of who you are. Because you're his child and you're created in his image and you're well loved, period. And why people commit suicide is because they don't believe that truth. And they've been lied to by Satan. I remember uh, uh, in matric, I literally cracked. Cracked into, I disintegrated, one can rather say. And my parents didn't know what to do, and my dad said to me, straight there, I mean, I'm in the middle of matric, says to me, you never ever have to go back to school again. I hated school, I did. I detested school just so that you know <laughs> where. Uh, no, 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 no. I was the master of detesting school. I hated school. And my dad set me free because he just said, I love you. Your value is not based on, your, on you passing the trick. If you do not have the ability or the desire, I didn't have the desire, but if you feel you can't emotionally go back, he said, you can stay on the farm. You don't ever have to go back. Can you believe that? Yet I've studied s way more than any of my siblings. And I'm the very one that shouldn't have. I mean, I, was, I had three year ops by the time I was two years old, uh, in standard two. So I circled to here. So my foundation was difficult. So school was an uphill climb. But my value should never have been based on that, it should be based on the fact that God loves me. Just because of who I am. 
and praise God that I had a father here on earth that said, I love you just for who you are. So my understanding of the father heart of God is not warped, but so much clearer. And if you've had a warped perspective of the father heart of God, may he come and minister to you today and tell you that he loves you. And if you want to question it, go read the Bible. The Bible tells you very clearly so that he loves you and he will never leave you or forsake you. And may we open our hearts for him to come and minister to, into our lives at all times through, through music because it's one of the most powerful mediums and ways that God used to bring comfort and solace to our hearts, especially in time of turmoil and confusion. So would you right now stand with me and let's adore God. Let's tell him how, how much we love him. Because we are assured of the fact that he loves us. Come let's stand and say, Lord we love you. And speak to him. Don't just sing the words, even speak to him and say, I, 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 I'm calling you, come let's worship him, let's adore him. But as we do, Speak to him in your spirit. Amen.